Okay, guys, out in the shop, having some blast. You gotta have a pair of these in your shop. Some Altex, 15 inch woofers, some big ass horns. Some bitches, they blast. Okay, so the other day I showed you my flea market buys, and here I have in the uh, little Wilton, uh, little Wilton Vice. I've got one of the uh, items I bought. It's a uh, tool holder for Kenna Metal profiling. And I'm going to see if I can focus in here. I'm learning about this. This tool holder sells for just about 90 bucks. And I paid about two bucks at the flea market for it. Um, called Kenna Metal, talked about it, and talked to MSC. And so today I picked up this piece right here and hopefully it'll focus i'm going to bring my finger in here where's my hand okay this 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 piece right here and it's called a shim Let's see if this guy will focus well you can see that the shim is hanging way out there and on top of the shim is actually a a uh, insert that'll sit on that so somebody has ground this puppy way back so what I've done is I've inserted a, a threaded screw that matches the thread there that holds the shim in place from the bottom. And I've put a, the, the old shim in there that they've ground. And what I'm going to need to do is braze, build up braze, so that that shim is not cantilevered out there that far. And I just don't think this is focusing very well. So. I'm going to do it off camera, but I'm going to give it hell. All I can do is screw it up. It's only a dollar piece, two dollar piece that I paid for, even though it's worth 90 bucks. But I'm hoping I can uh, braze that and then do some grinding and get some good support for that shim. And then uh, I'll be putting this piece to work. Okay, so I'll be back to you. I'm going to go turn up the music again and uh, do a little brazing. Uh, just one other item guys if uh, These can't twist clamps If you've never seen these or you don't have any go buy them you can find pretty good deals on eBay and uh, Way better than C clamps uh, This is a little one inch uh, Clamp it's a, it's a small little guy. Um, I do have others over here um, I've got the the larger clamps a whole variety of them but uh, I tell you once you use a, a can't twist clamp you'll never go back to a C clamp okay uh, I thought I'd just throw that into this video be back to you uh, just getting ready to uh, go ahead and braise this and I just I just don't think I explained I have this threaded piece of screw so it's, it's a screw that fits the the actual shim hold down hole I have it threaded in from the bottom and the reason I've done that is to protect the internal threads that are there when I braze and this this uh, screw that's in there now will be a sacrificial screw and it'll just get uh, ground off and that way I still have the threads from above um, I hope that makes sense but I need to protect those threads so I can screw and tighten that shim back in place. It's a uh, number two tap fits it. Uh, it was 256, I think, is the thread. Okay. Well, i got to be honest with you. A little change in plan as it, as it was going on. So what I ended up doing is that piece, the shim, got brazed in place. And I've cleaned it up. 
and I got to pick up the insert tomorrow. So we'll see if uh, see if that insert actually fits well. It, it, it appears that it will. Let me undo this vise here and spin it around. So there's the insert in place, and it's braised solid there. So the other piece sits up on top. Let me grab that. This is called a top notch holder and I assume it's because of this notch right here. So I'll pick up the, uh, the insert tomorrow and I think it's going to work out fine. And uh, the new uh, shim that I bought, I'll just return it since the old shim is uh, brazed right in place. So we'll see, see if I save this uh, tool holder. Well, uh, I just wanted to come back. Here's the, uh, let's see if I can get in here with a pointer. This is the new insert, the final insert here. And there is the shim right here that actually got brazed into place. So you can, if you go back and look at the beginning, you can see how far this nose was back on the shim. The shim was exposed like this cutting surface is right now. So, uh, it's, I think it's worked. It's worked out well. I've actually done a test cut with it, and I'll I'll go ahead and uh, show you the piece that I cut. We'll do a little cutting, uh, but I'm real happy with this uh, with this insert and the uh, the finish. It worked out. The fact that the that the uh, that the shim got soldered into place or uh, brazed into place. Um, doesn't really matter. It, it's it's going to be there for good and for the amount that I use the tool. Um, so, yeah, so there's there's the shim right there. And then this is the cutting the cutting tool itself. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll set it up in the lathe and we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, okay, be right back with you guys. This is the other insert tool that I bought and uh, I just uh, made a pass here. This is on stainless um, just to see how it would cut. I put a new insert in it and uh, really happy with that. And uh, that same, same piece um, same tool cutting a piece of steel uh, really happy with that so I'll chuck up the other other tool and we'll go for it this is the tool that I just showed in the lathe that cut the stainless there and I just wanted to show you this one this one actually has two shims underneath it um, and then the uh, the cutting tip is on top um, it's been used used and abused um, but uh, I'm real happy with it I had to take it all apart and and uh, it was rusty probably from uh, coolant that's been used in it uh, let me get it out of here for a second the uh, you can see there's the large hole is the hold down clamp and then the small hole is what holds the shims in place underneath Okay, so I'll go ahead and set the other tool up in the lathe. Okay, I've got the uh, other tool holder set up in, uh, on the lathe here, and uh, hopefully this thing's focusing. This camera doesn't look like it, but we'll give it hell and see what happens here. <laughs> Okay, got it set up here, so we'll take a, an end, uh, end cleanup pass on this part and then uh, go down the shaft a little bit. Let's 
it's just about a 15,000 cut. Got a nice chip breaker built into it. Okay, well I'm real happy with the tool. Okay guys, uh, let's see. Well I got it here. Got the camera set up, I thought I'd show you. These are a couple of insert tools that I made previously before I bought these tool holders. Um, you can see I just took a, a uh, tooling bit, a carbide on the one side and just used the back side of it to uh, cut the two angles. So basically about eight degrees in both directions uh, for this um, for this insert and I, I actually did a left and I did a right and uh, those have worked out well for me too uh, so it's another cheap way to just you know the inserts were six bucks or something like that and a couple of minutes in the mill and Made made the actual holders, and again this was just on the end of another carbide tool. Okay, thought I'd throw this in the end. Um, replacing the uh, tire on my bandsaw, the upper tire, the bottom one seems to be fine. Here's the uh, here's the old tire. Uh, it it's uh, it was coming off of there. Came off a couple too many times for me. Uh, it it was well worn um, so the new tire trying to put this uh, stretch that rubber onto that wheel by myself was a challenge uh, the wire ties help and and then uh, I had my son come down and give me a couple grabs also so just got to go ahead and set it up with some uh, epoxy glue or some uh, contact cement one of the two and uh, finish that up tomorrow and then get the saw back into service okay Talk to you soon. One final item, I just wanted to show you how, uh, how this unit cleaned up. A little CLR, and uh, I'm going to try to go back and bring the other video for you so you can see what it looked like when I brought it home. But uh, it definitely cleaned up uh, real good with uh, very little work. Okay, that should do it.